it's difficult to say if there was a specific defining moment that made me become a human rights defender. But I think the most clear one is in 2011 when the uprising started in Bahrain. And I took to the streets, standing there in the middle of the roundabout in Bahrain, calling for freedom, for rights, for democracy. I'll never forget that feeling as if you've been underwater holding your breath for your entire life. And then you come above water and you feel what it feels like to breathe oxygen for the first time in your life. The impact has been both positive and negative. Positive in the sense that it's made me a lot more empathetic to other people and their causes. I really believe that there is no such thing as a single issue cause, that all our causes are connected and that the sooner we realize that, the more successful we can be in what we do. The negative part, of course, is that more often than not, human rights defenders forget that they're human beings as well and that they need to take care of themselves. And I really hope that moving forward, we can do a better job in taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of our societies. Looking at the protesters in places like Iraq and Lebanon and Sudan and Algeria, taking to the streets and continuing the good fight, it really shows that no matter what governments do, no matter how much they learn from each other on how to best repress and oppress, we still have the ability to take to the streets and demand change. And as long as people are doing that, I will always find inspiration to continue my work as a human rights defender. Whenever I think about my hopes for the future, my thought immediately goes to my three nieces and nephews. We have generations upon generations who have had to go through these struggles. And my one wish is that my nieces and nephew are not going to have to go through the same struggle.